Hello everyone and welcome to a brand new Gentech PC product showcase. In today's full length feature review, we'll be taking a look at the brand new ASUS Republic of Gamers Zephyrus Duo. The Duo is aptly named because it's one of the few laptops that has actually two built-in displays with a main display of 16 inches and a smaller display down below. We hope that you're looking forward to this product showcase and let's go ahead and get things started with our unboxing. So this laptop will be shipped out double box with a plain black outside box and then the interior box that has some of the ASUS logo and other details. Everything is well packaged for shipping. We have the foam wedges to keep it from getting crushed or bounced around. And then we also have the plastic coating on the interior box as well, which would keep it safe from any kind of water damage. So let's remove that plastic coating and get that interior box open so we can see what's inside. So with the interior product box now open, we can see we have our laptop present right at the top. And it's further wrapped in some extra plastic materials to keep it protected during shipping. Just below the laptop, we're gonna find a smaller inner compartment. And this inner compartment is going to house all of our printed materials, such as our warranty information and product information. Now switching back over to the main box, we have the secondary box over to the side and we'll go ahead and get that opened up. We can see the holographic ASUS logo on it. And inside here on the left, we're gonna find our main power adapter and the adapter cable. A close-up of the power supply specifications, this is a full 330 watt power adapter. As for the power supply cable, it will be different depending on your region, so this will match whichever region you're ordering the laptop for. And the last item in the main box on the left-hand side is going to be an included palm rest. Now let's go ahead and unwrap our laptop and get the protective plastic coating off of it. And here's our first look at our laptop. We have one product insert on the lid that tells us about the cooling system. And once we open the laptop lid up, we're gonna find a cloth inserted, which is there to protect the screen during shipping from any kind of scratches. So let's talk about size and weight. The laptop alone comes in at five pounds and 14 ounces. And that would be 2,679 grams or 2.6 kilograms. With the power adapter included, it comes in at eight pounds and five ounces. And that would be 3.79 kilograms. Measurements for scale, we have coins. We have a quarter near the back and we can see the rear hinge comes in at about one and a half inches off the table surface. And the front area with a penny for scale is just under one inch.
The Duo has a really unique opening characteristic because of the smaller secondary screen. It actually lifts and tilts the secondary screen as you open the laptop lid, and it brings it back down when you close it to keep it safe and from getting scratched. Now with our laptop powered on for the first time, we can really take in the system in its unique nature. One of the things you'll notice right away is that our touchpad is located on the right hand side and that also doubles as our number pad. The keyboard is a standard low profile chiclet style keyboard with individually RGB backlit keys. Because of that secondary screen being located up top, that's why we don't have space for the traditional touchpad area and they do include the palm rest to give you extra space for resting your hands. It's important to note that the two displays, the bottom display is a fully fledged secondary monitor so you can use it for anything that you want. We have the main 16 inch display and at the top of it we have the integrated HD webcam and built in microphones. So overall everything comes together as a fairly nice package. It's actually quite portable when it's closed down, not being any larger than a traditional 15.6 inch laptop. So it is smaller than the larger 17 inch laptops and you get the extra screen real estate with the secondary screen. So here's a more quick look at the laptop from all the different angles. And let's go ahead and zoom in and take a closer look so we can see our interfaces for connectivity. Starting on our left hand side, we have our power port for charging the laptop, a USB 3.2 type A, a 3.2 type C, a micro SD card slot, and our 3.5 millimeter connection for audio. On the back of the laptop, we have a 2.5 gigabit LAN port, USB 3.2 type A, and our full size HDMI 2.1 output. And lastly, on the right hand side, there's a USB type C connection, and this is a full display port connection with G-Sync output. So here is a final look at the laptop with the lid closed from all the different angles before we move into the inside tour. Starting our inside tour, let's look at device manager to see our equipped hardware. We have the full-fledged NVIDIA RTX 4090. For the GPU, for CPU, we have the Ryzen 9 7945HX. As for the main monitor, here's the panel ID for it. The resolution for this monitor is 2560 by 1600 at a full 240 hertz refresh rate. For more detailed information about the CPU and the GPU, let's go take a look at CPU-Z and GPU-Z. So here is the information on our integrated graphics supplied by AMD. and the dedicated RTX 4090 by NVIDIA. For the CPU, we have the Ryzen 9. Currently 32 gigabytes of DDR5 for our system RAM. And that pretty much covers our main hardware. Our next section will be our performance benchmarks. And before we start, let's get our baseline temperatures. We have about 71 degrees Celsius max on our CPU right now. And our GPU is only at 43 degrees Celsius. For our baseline fan noise measurements, we have our sound meter by the intake and exhaust areas. So all of this data is collected while the system is at an idle state for the best case scenario. And of course, we'll come back and take these again when we're running our benchmarks for the worst case scenario when the system is under load. So we've started our first performance benchmark, which is 3D Mark Firestrike. And we'll go and take new measurements now for the fan noise to see how much it's gone up with the system under load. The best way to make use of any of these numbers is to look at other reviews that we've done since the testing is consistent and see how these numbers compare for other laptops with similar hardware. Now, as expected, the fans have definitely come up to speed with the benchmark and they're a lot louder now, but they're not nearly as loud as some of the other laptops that we've tested. 
So it'll be interesting to see how our thermals do when we get done with our benchmarking. Running the benchmarks on this laptop showcases one of the really neat things about having that secondary screen. We have a full screen benchmark running, but we can actually still run information on the second screen. So fire strike did conclude and we got a score of 37,735. And now to go back and look at our thermal information on our sensors, the CPU got up to 96.4 degrees Celsius max, and that'd be the hottest spot on the CPU in total. And the GPU only went up to 72 degrees Celsius max. So those are both very impressive performance scores as far as thermals. Continuing on with our benchmarks, Firestrike Ultra got a score of 11,651. Time Spy came in with a score of 15,876. And Port Royale came in at 11,202. And we have something special and extra today. We'll do a real-time run of the Cyberpunk 2077 built-in benchmark. We do not plan on taking it easy on the system. We're actually going to use the Ray Tracing Ultra preset. And here's our scores for that benchmark, and we can see we achieved over 60 frames per second average on one of the highest presets. You can always turn those settings down if you want to take advantage of the higher refresh rate of the monitor, but it is playable at the highest settings. So next up we have our Blender benchmark, and we'll run our CPU-only computing first. And here are the results for running Blender with the CPU only. And next up, we'll rerun Blender using the RTX 4090 for hardware acceleration. And here are the scores when we also include the dedicated GPU. Our next performance benchmark is going to be Cinebench R23. And our Cinebench scores are in 32,251 for multi-core and 19,006 for a single core performance. And our last performance test is going to be to show the built-in speaker system.
And we have now arrived at our last portion of our review, which is going to be disassembly of the laptop. There are many screws to remove and they are of different lengths, so be very careful when taking this laptop apart to keep track of where they go back. We can see the open ventilation cuts in the bottom panel. And a first look at the disassembled system. We have a 90 watt hour battery for this laptop in the center with speakers on the left and right hand sides. We do have one unoccupied SSD slot right here above the battery so you can add extra storage. System RAM is in the center and the currently occupied SSD slot is on the left. A two fan cooling system with heat pipes connecting everything throughout. Now moving further along into the disassembly, we've now removed the system RAM. Here are the single 16 gigabyte DDR5 SODIMS. Our occupied SSD has been removed. The system battery. And the entire cooling solution. When we go and take a close look at all the copper that was used for the cooling solution, we'll see that they use thermal paste throughout and not thermal pads, which is one of the reasons the cooling is so good. Except for the CPU, the CPU actually is using a liquid metal compound. And with our detailed disassembly complete, that actually does complete our review today. We hope that everyone enjoyed taking a first look at the new Asus Republic of Gamers Zephyrus Duo 16. Of course, if you're interested in this laptop or you would like to learn more, go look in the video description area and you'll find a product page link. And there you can find the current pricing and availability as well as the full system specifications. Now we know that it's not possible to answer every question in a video. So of course, if you have any questions remaining, feel free to go into the comment section and ask your questions there so we can answer them for you and everybody else. But don't forget, if you have any personal questions that you need to ask us, we're always available by phone or email. So feel free to contact us so we can help you out. So once again, we just want to remind everybody that this was Gentech PC, and we'll see you next time.